If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question first on your own before listening on. We're going to go ahead and let X measure the depth below the spout at the top of the tank. So this distance between this arrowhead right here and this arrowhead right here, we will call X. And since the entire height of the tank is eight feet, as indicated over here on the right, that means that this distance from here to here would be eight minus X. Now you'll notice that we have a circle drawn in the middle of the diagram. This is going to represent a very small cylindrical portion of the water that's in the tank. And it's important to note that it's a cylinder because a cylinder has a certain shape to it. We're gonna draw this cylinder so that its thickness is a very, very minute quantity, very small thickness. And we're going to call that thickness delta x. We use the delta notation because it's a very tiny distance. And we know that for the volume of this cylindrical portion of water, we could just use the formula for the volume of a cylinder, and that would be pi times its radius squared times its height. Now, the height of the cylinder that we have outlined again is going to be delta x. The radius of the cylinder would be measured, perhaps we can use a different color, from here all the way out to where the edge of the container is. So right there would be the radius r. Now, we're going to add a couple of lines to this diagram next. And so we've extended a vertical line from the base of the container straight up to the top, and we've labeled this distance here D. Now we want to label a couple of other distances. Remember that down here the distance is marked as 3, and so that means this distance here also is 3. And since the entire radius of the top portion of the tank is 6, that means that this distance from here to here is going to be 3. And that gives a total distance of 6 if we added these two 3s right here. We'll also mark this distance right here, which you recall is equivalent to the distance right here, and that was 8 minus x as derived earlier. Now the reason we're marking up the diagram right now is because we want to come up with an expression for the radius in terms of our variable x. And so if we look carefully, we're going to see two similar triangles. And one of the two similar triangles, we can sort of shade in in perhaps a different color. So right about here, in this orange color, we have a triangle, a right triangle in fact. And then if we use a different color, we have another larger triangle that sort of envelops the orange triangle. That was not a good choice of color. Maybe we could use yellow to emphasize it. So from here all the way down to there and then straight up is another triangle. So that yellow triangle is similar to the orange triangle. And we're gonna, because they're similar triangles, use a proportion. So we can say that the side D divided by this side of eight minus x, so those are two sides of the orange colored triangle, would correspond to the side over here that's marked three in the yellow triangle, divided by this side right here. Now that length right there is the full eight feet. And we're gonna solve this for the distance d. So we'll cross multiply to get eight times d is equal to three multiplied by eight minus x. And then we can divide both sides by eight. And so we have an expression for d. And going back to the diagram, we can see that the radius is going to be equal to the distance from here to right there, which again is 3, plus this distance from here to here, which is what we have called d. Now we just came up with an expression for d, and that was 3 eighths multiplied by the 8 minus x. So Perhaps a little convoluted, but we have finally come up with an expression for the radius r in terms of x. And we're going to be plugging that into our equation for the volume. Now what we can do inside these brackets is distribute the 3 eighths, just to simplify it a little bit. And after we distribute the 3 eighths times the 8, that's going to become a 3. And then we'll have minus 3 eighths x. This is all still squared. And then we have 3 plus 3, so we can actually call that 6. So now we have an expression for the volume of that very thin cylindrical portion of water, and we know that the force required to lift that portion of water is simply going to be the weight of the water. Now the weight of the water is going to be its density multiplied by its volume. The question gives us the density as 62.5, so we know the force is going to be equal to 62.5 times that expression for volume. Now if we wanted to determine the work required to lift that small cylindrical portion of water up and out through the spigot, we would have to know that the work done 
is going to equal the force that's acting on that cylindrical portion of water times the distance that it has to travel. Well, that distance is actually just x, because that was the distance measured below the top of the surface of the water. So we could write force times x, and so the work done on this small portion of water would be this force multiplied by x. Now, for convenience's sake, we're going to move this x all the way up into the front so we get 62.5 pi times x. So we're just going to put the x right here. Now, we're getting there, but we don't want just the work done in that very tiny cylindrical portion of water. We want the work done on all of the water that's in the container. So we basically carve up the water into an infinite series of these small cylindrical pieces of water, and then we add them all together. And, of course, calculus, that's known as integration. So we're going to actually integrate across the entire distance that all of the water must travel, and that is 8 feet. So basically from 0 to 8 of this work function that we've come up with. Now, basically speaking, when we integrate our work function, the delta x changes its notation to the dx notation, and we are now left with an integral. And perhaps we can proceed by removing the constant of 62.5 pi to the outside of the integral. And then we have x. It's going to be helpful perhaps to write 6 minus 3 eighths x twice since we're squaring it. And then we're going to have to foil out the 6 minus 3 eighths x. And then after doing that foiling, we can distribute this x into the parentheses. And we are now ready to actually integrate. So we recall that when we do that, we're going to be adding 1 to the powers and then dividing by whatever that new exponent becomes. So for example, when we start here with x to the 1, we're going to end up with x to the 2, and then we're going to divide that by 2. Here we're going to have x to the 3, and divide that by 3, and then here we're going to have x to the 4, and divide that by 4. Note that when you divide, you're going to actually be multiplying these denominators. So this 2 times 3, and this 64 times 4. And we can simplify a little bit. 36 divided by 2 is 18. 9 over 6 is going to become 3 over 2. And then finally, we can plug in the upper limit of integration, which is 8. We're going to be plugging that in for x. And then technically, we also have to plug in the lower limit of integration and then subtract that result. But you'll notice when we plug in the lower limit, we're going to be having 0 for all of the x's. And that's actually going to cancel out all these terms right here. Basically, inside the brackets, we would have a big 0. Multiplied by 62.5 is still 0. So in essence, we don't need to even consider that second limit of integration. And we can just plug in this into our calculator. And when you do that, you should get exactly 33,000 pi. And then if you want an approximation to that, you can punch that into your calculator. And you're going to get about 1.04 times 10 to the power of 5. And then the unit of work here will be a foot times a pound. And that's because originally we had calculated the work by multiplying a force and a distance. The distance was in feet, the force was in pounds, so we're left with a foot pound. And so these answers will be the final and correct answers to the question.